Hello, my name is Eka. My name is Mikko. I am Paavo. I am Perttu. I am Frankie. And together we are Apocalyptica. And you are watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Ruhamad from Loudwire here with the entirety of Apocalyptica and its Wikipedia fact or fiction time. So, I browsed through all your Wikipedia pages, like your personal ones, Apocalyptica ones, uh, songs, albums, all that stuff. So, that's exciting. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna prove or disprove what's on there. So, uh, Aika, uh, it said that you started playing cello when you were nine, uh, and you and your sister, sisters would make recordings for your family, usually for Christmas. Uh, that's true. That's true? Yeah. Good. What kind of, was it stuff that you'd play during Christmas? Was it Christmas type music? It was actually, it, yeah, it, it was uh, classical and Christmas music. And the thing was that my older sister played piano and uh, yeah, older of my younger sisters played violin. And the other one played piano and one brother played uh, viola and drums and whatever. So oh, wow. we always, for grandparents, we did a Christmas present and we recorded for C cassette, you know, okay. the, some music. Christmas songs and stuff, and then we performed always on the Christmas Eve. Wow, that was fun. That's Do you still cool. have some some existing? Well, I think it's <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. That's put a, that thing in my being not to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that out as a B side or something. Yeah. Do you have videos as well? Uh, no, it was time before video cameras. Wow, oh, damn. <laughs> Super <laughs> eight. <laughs> they were like this big. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, uh, Pavo, at the age of six. Uh, it says you took a cello lesson and immediately decided that would be the instrument that you would play f for your entire life. Uh, maybe it's true, but you know that uh, that said really. Um, Did you have pat that revelation? Uh, pathetic, right? Yeah, yeah. You know. And that's the decision we all <coughs> others regret. <laughs> <laughs> You, you started playing cello when you were five. Yep. Five? Fact. All right, we're good fact. Only true. Internet Ooh. knows everything yeah. about us. So far. I want to preface this by saying that, Frankie, your Wikipedia page is maybe my favorite Wikipedia page I've ever read because it's so obviously written by like a super fan of yours. It, you'll, you'll see what <laughs> I mean. Himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Besides of the amazing looks, his skills as a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Already back in 95, he conquered the world. <laughs> Seeing him new changed my life for good. <laughs> this is like truly special, this stuff. It, it says, this is this is for me. I'll tell you what, I'm not changing it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write Nor it, but I'm definitely not changing it. <laughs> Nor should you. But it says Frankie Perez is paid the high price for low living, has survived the blues, and has earned the right to sing them. <laughs> Perez was an artist from the day he was born. True. True. <laughs> 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 say it either, bro. <laughs> Frankie again. It says uh, by six. True. <laughs> All right, next. Good, good. <laughs> uh, by 16, you were already a seasoned veteran of the Las Vegas music scene, and you were performing at bars and venues that you were not old enough to attend. True. That's true. Actually, probably earlier than that. Earlier? Yeah. More well, it's, I said 16. I said 16. I was about 15. I was So 15, bars. you were playing the bar circuit yeah. in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas. Tell us about that. Was was that kind of a crazy place to be as a kid? There just wasn't any other place to play. Like when we were kids, right. you either played the the bars or the desert. And <laughs> yeah, seriously, we would rent we would rent generators, haul them in the middle of the desert, and play gigs. Damn. Yeah. So they what you do is if you played a bar, you'd play the gig. You wait outside, and yeah. then you go on, and then they'd kick you out. Oh. Yeah. But okay. after a while, after like you played the same bar a while, they would kind of look past the oh, okay. to stay there. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Aika, when attending uh, Sibelius Sib mm -hmm. Academy, where Pavo and Pertu also graduated from, uh, you could not get an apartment or student support uh, money because you lived too close to Helsinki. 
That's true, but I don't know why the fuck that the information is. <laughs> <laughs> but these two never graduated. No. They never. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. This, this, this is the only one the master of the music here. You're master. the only graduate. Oh, look at that. Dude, okay. So they got that one wrong. But I, I, I got the problem sorted at uh, playing gigs and uh, pretending that I'm uh, unemployed. Ah, okay. So I get money from the government that way. So ah, I'm, nice. I'm a sneaky bitch. Uh, it says that the song Bittersweet is conceptualized uh, with uh, Villavalo of him singing the bitter and Laurie from Rasmus singing the sweet. Wow. I always, <laughs> that song, that song I always like, thought that I am the sweet in that song. <laughs> that sounds like uh, overanalyzing a good song. Over, maybe yeah. just someone's opinion of it. Yeah. But that wasn't like... No. Not the you didn't try to make it that way. No. No. All right. Well... I guess someone feels that. You know, I, I think uh, Bitter Sweet is bitter. more about a girl who wants the other one, who doesn't want the girl, and the other guy wants the girl. You know, it's like this triangle thing. Okay, in the, in Nobody the, gets the guys, what they want. Guys get Sit better down. along and live hand in hand. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's a happy end. That's the way we do it. Happy end. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Very That's happy. happy uh, Peretu, you attained a lifetime chair in the Helsinki Philharmonic, where your father is also a cellist. Yeah, my father is also retired, uh, already retired, like a okay. few years ago. But yeah, I, I had the chair in there for seven years. I was able to kind of balance working a couple of months in the orchestra and then going to the tour with Apo for like one year. And, but I gave up that position in 2005 because it was just too much and like... Yeah. Too much, too difficult to all again. the time beg like, can I go again? And they were okay. very supportive in there in the orchestra, but yeah, too much is too much. Uh, the apocalyptic career just have been all the time growing, and we got more and more chances. So everybody at that time decided to fully give our our all, whole impact for this project. Cool. Uh, and <laughs> so here's some more good Frankie stuff. <laughs> 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 Right. I can see it too after pre-reading your shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a I was really good at cheating in high school. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I mean? haven't been, yeah, I haven't been protecting my notes. Uh, Frankie, you had developed expensive habits that you couldn't afford and were paying the price personally for your success. It became clear to you at the time that time was needed and you stepped away from the spotlight for the whole of 2007. You'd be great in a soap opera, dude. By Thank the you. Um, that's true. That's, okay, that's all true. <laughs> that's all true. <laughs> I mean, it's poetically written, but it's true. <laughs> but a fact. Yeah. Good. Uh, the song "I'm Not Jesus." Uh, the song uh, thematizes. I guess it's about uh, child abuse by clerics, and uh, Corey Corey Taylor uh, sings it from the perspective of a man who was sexually abused by a priest when he was a child and now confronts his abuser. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's what cool. I took from yeah. Was there, like, a, what made you guys choose that subject at the time? We all have the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> we love... Thanks Mike. for bringing it up. <laughs> I didn't mean to open the old wounds. We sang in a boy choir when we were... <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not our lyric. It's a... Ah. Lyrics are written by our friend Johnny Andrews, who's really close to the band, and he's okay. done lyrics also for this album. And uh, we found the story to be really interesting, like his perspective to tell the story. Sure. And uh, it's so strong, uh, the message, and kind of a bit fresh uh, as a subject to normal what people sing about. So that's yeah, something sure. that really stood out. Last one. And of course, it's directed at Frankie. The thanks. And this is my personal favorite. <laughs> it's a. Uh, Frankie Addict. Yeah. It may be the most honest music he's ever written. His own personal journey of love, loss, and vices, three things he knows only too well. His story is one that has seen the best of highs and the worst of lows. He's carved his name and poured his blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> into every song. True. Well, what can I say? True. True. <laughs> Uh, favorite Wikipedia page. <laughs> you want to rewrite it for me? Then? No. No way. No, 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 no way. It's perfect. 
we need to find the person also to write for us, you know. <laughs> Somehow I feel it's he's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about.